Hello and welcome to my eighth video lesson in using Blender 2.6. In this video I'm going to be talking about and showing you how to add materials, in other words colors, to your objects. So without further ado, um, in my scene right now I have a cube, a lamp, and a camera. And I'm going to go over to my um, properties window on the right hand side. And with my cube selected, I'm going to go ahead and, add, and go to the materials tab. And this is where we can add materials uh, and multiple materials to our uh, object. So to add a material, uh, we're going to press this new button. And as you can see, it gives us a preview um, of the material. And right now it's kind of almost white, a very, very, very light gray. Um, and it's a little bit shiny. You can see a reflection on it or a highlight on it rather. Um, and to change the color, we want to click on this white box, or this really light gray box, under diffuse. Diffuse means um, the light that we can see. And if you think in real, in the real world, um, you can only see um, an object if light is bouncing off of it and then back into your eye. Um, and diffuse is that light. Um, it's not the what um, the light that would make it shiny or or uh, really kind of reflective. Diffuse is just the normal light that bounces in, into your eyes. So I'm going to click on this white um, box and now I get a color palette and I'm going to select any color and as you can see my cube turns that color. So I'll select a blue color and that's it. That's how you add materials. Uh, of course it's more complicated than that because we're not just adding colors to our objects. We want to make them look like any material you see in real life. Um, in real life uh, a red sweater would look different uh, in material than a red uh, playground ball, for instance, or, uh, or a basketball. Um, so there are more than just colors and materials. There's obviously texture, so it could be bumpy or very smooth. Uh, it could be shiny or dull. Um, it could be reflective or very matte. Um, so we could change any of these things in Blender. I'm going to talk about a few of them today. Um, right under the word diffuse, you'll see the word intensity, and it's a slider, so right now it's at 0 0.8. I can turn it up, and the color kind of gets to its full intensity, or I can take it down, and it turns more kind of dark all the way towards black, and loses its kind of brightness. So I'm going to put that all the way up to, me. I'll go ahead and click and type in 0 0.8 again, and press enter. Um, right below it is specular, and specular means the amount of kind of gloss on the surface of the object. You can't see it while you're still in the 3D viewport, but you'll see a preview it over here. And of course, like if you if you were shining a lamp or a flashlight directly onto a round ball that was a color, you'd see a reflection in it probably, or a, or a, or a glossy area rather that was uh, brighter than the rest. That's what that area is. And the specular color, um, well, you can do two things. You can actually make it a color. So if you click on the box, you can make it pink, and as you'll see, the specular area got pink. And you can change the intensity, so you can uh, make it kind of very um, solid, or I'll set this all the way down, you can make it very uh, dull and barely there. I'll go ahead and click on it, and press 0 0.5, and press enter. You can also change the hardness of it, and this would de depict how... Um, well, hard the outside of the object is. You all know how um, a rubber ball would probably not have a very fine reflection in it. It would be a little bit more scattered on the surface. Whereas a, um, let's say, a marble ball uh, would have a very kind of hard reflection on it. Right now, it's kind of halfway in the middle. You see a little bit of blurring at the edge of the, uh, of the specular area. And if I turn the hardness all the way up, or just really high, you'll see that area shrinking and getting harder, like it's one small little point. Um, on the other hand, I could turn this all the way down to zero, and then the uh, the specular area gets really big. In fact, it hardly it expands the entire side of the object that we can see. So I might turn this up to, um, well, it's really up to you. Uh, that looks okay. I might turn the intensity down a little bit. It all depends on what I'm making. So that looks a little bit duller, a little bit less like a shiny ball. It just looks like a natural colored blue ball. Um, if I keep on scrolling down, I can either use my my uh, scroll bar or I can just wheel my mouse down. Um, 
we are going we can affect the emit and emit I'm gonna kind of collapse these areas uh, so you can collapse them using these arrows the emit which is under the shading category makes our object kind of act like a light in our scene it won't actually um, light up or act like a light to make other objects in the scene that are near it uh, more bright or it won't actually project light onto other objects but emit will kind of make things look more cartoony it'll get rid of the shadow so if the, if the object uh, which is a ball in the preview uh, emits its own kind of light source that only affects itself it won't have these dark shadows on, on the um, underside so the opposite side is from the light uh, so if I turn emit up I'm going to click on it and turn it to 0 0.5 and when I press enter you'll see that the whole thing got brighter and truer to its actual color that I selected. So I selected that color blue and when I chose emit the shadows and lighting affected the whole thing less. If I turn emit up to 1 itself which is its full value pretty well you'll see that it pretty well got that entire shade of blue all the way through. So this is how you can make things more cartoony. I usually like to, to, to turn this up to about 0 0.2 so that my object looks a little bit brighter than it would be a little bit less amateur 3D looking, um, but not totally uh, solid. I believe this will go up to, let's see if I can type a really high number into this. Yeah, I can. So it actually starts to get almost more neon the higher you go. One would be almost the full emit level, uh, but again, I'll turn it down to 0 0.2. And by default, it's at um, 0. Uh, if we keep going down in the materials panel, You'll see other things for transparency, so I can turn the alpha, which means this transparency down on my object. Um, I might leave that back at full transparency. I can make my object act like a mirror, so I'll click that little mirror and change the reflectivity up. Now our reflectivity is a very complicated thing in 3D. Um, it's not just as simple as making an object act like a mirror and that's it. Um, but we won't get there in this video. Uh, when you try rendering this scene by pressing F12, you'll see how you don't really get the mirror effect that you want because, well, right now there's nothing to reflect. It's just a gray uh, background. So I'm going to un unselect mirror and collapse that. What happens if you want more than one color on that object, though? Um, so what you can do is actually go into edit mode by pressing tab and select faces. And we can actually uh, assign a different material to each side or any sides that we want. So we can have multiple sides with the same material and a few with other materials. And of course if we subdivide this whole cube up, so if I press A and A and then W and subdivide, we can give each of these new faces uh, its own material as well. But I'm going to keep this cube simple. I'm going to click on one of the sides um, and I'm going to make that side red and maybe less shiny than the blue that's already on it. So I'm, I'll give it a whole new material. To do that, I'm going to go to the top of my uh, materials uh, window or the materials tab in the properties window and I'm going to check this plus or I'm going to press it and what that will do is it'll make a new slot for material. Right now we have one material and it's taking up one slot in this in this lighter uh, window but I'm going to press plus and that makes a new slot. There's no actual name there so there's no actual material it's just a slot. To make a new material in that slot, I'm going to press the new button and you'll see it's the default kind of light gray there. I'm going to open up diffuse and change that color to red. Again, you can see it's a little bit dark on the bottom hand side. Um, so I'm going to open up shading and turn emit up to 0.2 like I did before. And I don't want to have this glossy area on it or the uh, specular area, so I'm going to turn specular. Uh, the intensity is specular all the way down to zero and you'll see it looks like a totally matte uh, material now. I want to get this red which is called material.001 in fact I'll rename it right there to red matte and I'm gonna apply it to that uh, to the face that I have selected so I'm gonna go ahead and have that selected and press assign aha and it assigned it. I can assign that red to any of these other faces by selecting the face I'll select that one actually and it switched back to the blue one because that's the material that's on that face but I'm going to click red matte and assign and so now I have those two sides that have that red material and of course I can go back into edit mode 
And that's my object finished, but I'm going to go ahead and make a few more material. So I'll press, actually I'll go ahead and make that material, uh, and I'll name it properly. I'll go blue, um, shiny, I'm not sure if shiny has an E or not, but there we go. And I'm going to press to make a new slot, and I'm going to give that a new material. And I can turn that into a green material. And again, I'll go down to shading and turn that up to the emit up to 0 0.2. And I'll leave the specular the way it is. And I'll select the side that I want and click assign. Whoops, I've got to click the green one first. I'll actually name that green. And I'll click assign. And maybe one more. I'll make a new material slot and click on new and turn the diffuse color to yellow. And yellow looks kind of worse when it has a shade or a shadow on it, so I'm going to turn the emit up a little bit more, maybe 0 0.5, and I'll turn specular all the way down as well. And I'm going to call this one bright yellow. And I'm going to click uh, sign. Okay, so I hope that helped. Um, go ahead and add some materials to whatever object that you've created. Um, and in a future video, I'll show how you can actually paint on your object and bring an object's kind of material uh, unwrapped uh, so that you can actually paint the texture of an object in a program like Photoshop or GIMP. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.